Good afternoon and welcome to Stock Market Today. I'm Justin Nielsen and I'm joined today by Ed Carson. While Alyssa is still on vacation, but never fear, uh, she tells us she'll be back tomorrow. Uh, one more trading day until the 2020 year is in the books. So on today's show, we'll of course take a look at the indexes and we'll also revisit Semiconductor Taiwan, Semiconductor TSM. We'll also take a look at Visa, uh, it's it along with MasterCard is looking kind of like a setup. Um, and finally, FCX, a lot of the metals and mining ore uh, names looking very interesting. So Freeport McMoran. McMoran. Um, we'll take a look at that one if we can learn how to say it. Um, but first, let's take a look at the indexes. Um, kind of mild movement. Uh, S&P 500 looks like it was up for a tenth. Uh, NASDAQ composite up uh, about 0.15%. The Dow Jones Industrials up 024 And the Russell 2000 uh, was up the most with a 1% gain, uh, a little bit over that. Um, so what, what do you think of today's action here, Ed? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to make too much of every day's move, but like on Monday, the major indexes had a decent day, but a lot of the growth stocks struggled today. Uh, not much movement in the major indexes, but small caps like the Russell, the growth stocks outperformed. There's a number of breakouts. So, I mean, if you average it all out, it's still been a decent week. I mean, overall for most things. So I think things are looking pretty good. Obviously, we've had such a huge run in the market that the NASDAQ has has almost doubled since the March lows. I mean, it's been a pretty, it's pretty an amazing year given how horrible a lot of the headlines are out there in the, in the world. Right, and just, you know, the economic news that's been coming out, the uncertainty, everything like that. Um, the fact that the market kind of discounted a lot of that uh, very early on and kind of mm -hmm. projected ahead. You know, we always talk about how the stock market is a forward looking uh, mechanism. It's a leading indicator and uh, it certainly kind of saw the, the writing on the wall that this was going to be, you know, an economic recovery, and it still is is looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, as you said, a lot of the growth names that have been hit uh, the, the prior two days were kind of showing a comeback, uh, as, as well as the Russell 2000, as you mentioned. Um, anything else on the indexes that you wanted to talk about uh, there? Not really, no. Okay, let's go ahead and move on into some stocks, and we'll start with Visa. Um, now, Visa, uh, the ticker symbol V on this one, has been uh, one of those leaders for a long time, it along with MasterCard. Um, but you know, if you look at the recent action, if you look at the year-to-date action, with these big moves in the indexes, the relative strength is fairly uh, mediocre on this one. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting, Visa, it, you could have probably bought it off of this notion here, off of this breaking the trend line, sort of has continued to rebound from the 50-day, 10-week line, but it broke out today. But yeah, the relative strength is definitely a weakness. You you sort of have to be betting that the market, that, that conditions, you're betting the conditions will get better and that this will be a leader in the coming year. And, and, and maybe it will, uh, you know, it, it should do a lot better next year. Um, but as you said, this is basically a long-term leader. Uh, you know, it, we, it isn't on the long-term leader list, but going to a weekly, you know, you can see that it had a pretty decent performance on a relative strength level, you know, for several years here, steady, a steady winner and you could, you could count on it. Yeah. And, you know, back in 2017, I was, as I was looking at this chart um, and you can't see it fully, but it really did have a very long consolidation, kind of like this long consolidation that we've seen this year. Um, and, you know, it had a very steady move after that. Of course, 2017 was kind of a steady moving market, uh, you know, in general, what I think the S&P 500 had the biggest correction of 3.4% that year. So it was just yeah. kind of a, a, a steady mover in general. But, um, you know, you do get that sometimes with these stocks where it'll take a break for a longer time. And if the market is moving, then by definition, its relative strength is going to be kind of lackluster. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it can't come back. Um, I always look at Apple in 2004, March 2004, it had a pretty mediocre relative strength because it had sat out a lot of the 2003 uh, bull market. Um, but then when it came on, it really came on strong and you know has, has been a, a big mover. Um, let's go ahead and turn our attention over to uh, chip maker, Taiwan Semiconductor. And this is one that we've talked about a number of times because it just seems like it keeps on offering uh, potential entries. Uh, and this is uh, just another potential entry here, right? Yeah, it has a three weeks tight pattern. So it finally cleared above this 107.94 buy point. As this sort of trend line shows, you probably could have bought it a couple of days earlier. 
Yeah, it's just been really amazing. Uh, you know, we, we've had back and forth. Can this really outperform like this? Because it is a little unusual how well it's doing. It traditionally is a, something that hugs the 50-day line, and it's well above that. But there are a lot of tailwinds for, for TSM uh, and the relative strength lines at a record high. It, it does keep on offering entries and hasn't hasn't had really bad action when you look at this relative strength line, even during some of the corrections, hasn't been right. that bad mm -hmm. um, overall. And, you know, as you mentioned, you know, there are those tailwinds. So a lot of times we talk about, um, you know, it's not just about the technical action, you know, you sometimes have to look at the fundamental story. And, you know, they, they do have, uh, you know, their customer base is kind of, you know, some of those big, um, big names that you that you recognize. And, you know, as as they kind of have demand for their chips, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, uh, which is, is, is a big one, um, definitely, definitely makes uh, uh, some, some decent moves as a result uh, of, of what's mention, happening with the customers. Yeah. yeah, what you were talking about earlier, just that there's a lot of chip names that had good days today, like LAM Research, Applied Materials, AMD, Integris. Those are just a few of the names that come to mind that I think bounce from their 21-day moving averages, you know, just looking, looking uh, you know, positive. So definitely chips are had, a, had a good day and are, and are looking good. And it's always nice when you don't have the lone wolf, when you have uh, that, that group support, you know, and, and if you can get the leader of the group, then that's even better. Uh, that's, that's one of the tenets of Can Slim, of course. Um, let's go ahead and turn our attention over to metals, uh, a little bit different here. Now, David Chung on IBD Live had mentioned how copper was looking very interesting uh, very early on. This was, this was months ago. Um, and Freeport McMoran, uh, FCX is the symbol on this one, is, is a copper play. And this is one that has been tightening up after this nice move that it had. And uh, today it, it had quite the breakout. Yes, and uh, like TSM, this broke out from a uh, three weeks tight. So the buy point, you know, at 25, 53, you know, really, really strong action. Uh, it's probably a little extended, especially for a three weeks tight. You know, those are like really short consolidations. You want to try to get those as close as possible mm -hmm. uh, to to the buy point, um, but this is doing well. And this is again, a sign that it's nice to see the leadership broaden out. Like maybe some of the, you know, you know some of those IPOs that were doubling in November. <laughs> right. <laughs> and some of the software names say, some of them didn't do well today. Some did, some didn't. I mean, the software and some of those IPOs didn't, we didn't see all the growth stocks, but it's nice to see it broaden out. Um, we probably are gonna see some cyclical plays. I mean, this one already had a mammoth run um, yeah. from, from the lows. And it could keep doing it if copper is basically your bellwether for the ec global economy because it's used in everything. And um, so, you know, FCX is doing well. Caterpillar is setting up in a three weeks tight. And you, you I know you were mentioning a bunch of mining plays before the show. Right. Yeah. I mean, and this is something that we've been keeping our eyes on just because, again, you, you've been seeing the strength in a lot of these names. I mean, just U.S. Steel is one example. Um, the symbol on that is X. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you, you kind of get the, these moves all together. And, you know, just like we were talking about with the chip makers, when you kind of see these, these big moves and these setups happening in an industry or in a sector altogether, uh, it just kind of lets you know, hey, something might be going on here. And uh, if you can, again, jump on you know, some of the leaders of the group, um, that can really be profitable for you. Yeah, this group is 15, for United States Steel, is, uh, US Steel, it's 15 out of 197. The mining group that FCX is in is number five. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're not joking around here. These aren't yeah. just lagging groups. These, are, <laughs> right. these are groups that are outperforming. All those hot groups that we talk about, these are, these are elite groups and uh -huh. people should be paying attention. I know everybody wants to get in the coolest software name, but sometimes these are the kind of stocks that really do well. Now, now we'll see, but there are definitely some promising action in, in this sector as well. Definitely worth keeping them on your radar. So uh, that'll do it for us today. Uh, as mentioned, tomorrow is our last day of 2020. So we will be back. Uh, Ed and Alyssa will be back for that show tomorrow after the close. It is a full day of trading, not like uh, we had last week where it was the half day on, on Christmas Eve, uh, New Year's Eve. You, you get to uh, get the full day and then, then go have your New Year's Eve party. Um, and uh, also, if you'd like, you can join us on IBD Live. That's a place where we've been talking about all of these stocks and trends and the market. Uh, we do that for the first hour of trading. We start 10 minutes uh, before the bell at 6.20 a.m. Pacific time, 9.20 a.m. 
Eastern time. And uh, yeah, we go for a full hour, usually uh, not finishing until, you know, well, today it was a little bit after eight o'clock a.m. Pacific time. So, uh, you know, def definitely got more than an hour's worth. Um, but, you know, it's it's one of those things we talked a lot about on today's show, uh, what what types of things we find can help us kind of increase our performance. Uh, the panels, uh, panelists all shared their ideas and um, it was interesting to see the Q&A. A lot of people were finding that IBD Live, just making that a part of their daily routine has uh, significantly improved their results this year. So we hope you join us at investors.com slash IBD Live. You can go ahead and take a two week trial of that and uh, we hope to see you there. But until then uh, we will either see you tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon after the close. Have a great day and thanks for watching.